happy are you? Would you like to be happier? There are a huge number of things in life we have no control over, but remarkably, one of the things we can control is our own happiness. If you need to lose weight and get fit, you have to actively do things to make that happen. Well, the same applies to your happiness. I invited people from across the country to join me for a series of workshops where I would introduce them to strategies to improve their happiness. They would then try them in their own lives. I have seen the growth of the science of positive psychology and it provides real evidence that we can learn to be happier. You have a one and only life. And we all need to be thinking, how will I want to look back on my one and only life and say, these were the cards I was played and this is what I did with them. Welcome to America. Here's somewhere happiness is taken really seriously. The pursuit of happiness is even written into the Constitution. I, I've spent over the course of my life a lot of time in America. I studied here, I work here, I even got married here. And I've always been struck by how positive Americans are, how often you're reminded to have a good day, how often you're greeted with a big American smile. But even more importantly, America is the home of some of the best research on how to be happy. The people on our course came with different levels of happiness, and a large part of this has to do with their genetics. Your genes account for about 50% of your happiness. Your life circumstances contribute only 10%, leaving a full 40% of your happiness in your own control. If you want a convincing reason why you should take your happiness seriously, you could start here at Berkeley University, California, where groundbreaking research that took many years to complete showed that happier people live more successful and better lives. The research in the 1960s rated photos in a college yearbook. Researchers then tracked the lives of all the women in the yearbook over the next 30 years. The idea that one photo that's totally artificial, that most people hate, it's a millisecond in time, would say anything about your life is preposterous. And in actuality, what we found is that, you know, the warmth of a woman's smile, and in particular, the degree to which it involves this muscle that surrounds the eyes called the ubiquilaris oculi, warmer smiles when you're 20, predicted for the next 30 years, a life for women that was less anxious, less distressing, and then when they're 52, they were happier. They came to the lab when they were 27, um, 42 and 52, I think, um, and women with warmer smiles are doing better. They have warmer ties, they're succeeding in life. And they were the most likely to describe their husbands still at age 52 as the love of their lives. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. They did. They did, actually. <laughs> did they? They did. Yeah, okay. They did. Well, good. <laughs> you know my study better than I do, so. 